Number five that we have on the list is the giant river prawn, otherwise also known as the Malaysian prawn and freshwater scampi. The scientific name is going to be listed right here on the screen. I'm not even going to bother pronouncing it. They're not to be confused for ghost shrimp. Ghost shrimp are a lot more clear. They don't have too much coloration on them. They don't have too much stripe patterns on them. These are what baby prawn shrimps look like. They're a little bit more bug-eyed and they do have like an orangish color on them and a bluish greenish tint to them. They also have these big claws in the front. These prawns, they can be found in many areas of the subtropical parts of the Indo-Pacific areas from places like India to Southeast Asia and even stretching out to Northern Australia. You can even find these savage shrimps in areas of Africa, Thailand, China, Japan, and New Zealand. These prawns are some of the largest prawns on earth and many countries hunt and eat these prawns as they are a good and natural food source. Feeding these guys and carrying for these guys is relatively easy they're not too hard to keep as pets only thing that you need to consider is that when they get a good size when they get about to a medium size then that's when you need to separate them from everything else absolutely everything else you don't want to keep them with fish you don't want to keep them with other shrimp with other crayfish because they will absolutely kill everything everything that they see is an opportunity to feed and to eat. They love live feeding. You can also feed them frozen foods. You can feed them pretty much anything. They will even eat a small baby mouse or a rat that's frozen, which is basically food that's usually fed to reptiles. They will eat that. They will eat pretty much anything you give them. These prawns are very opportunistic feeders, meaning they will just pretty much eat anything you give them. Me personally, I love to feed them live worms. I love to feed them frozen shrimp. Yes, they do eat other shrimp. They also love to eat krill. You can also feed them live fish, which is not something that I always feed them, but I do like to feed them that every once in a while just to see them hunt. This is just an example of how big they actually get. So this prawn shrimp in particular that you see right now in the screen in front of you is pretty much as big as my hand if not bigger he is all alone in a comfy 29 gallon tank and he is fresh water and he does not require any hiding spots all he requires is food and love prawn shrimps can grow well over 14 inches they are the biggest shrimps in the world and they need a maximum of 40 gallons at full size number four that we have on the list is the Paracromis dovi the rainbow bass also most commonly referred as the wolf cichlid these fish they can be found locally in central America, commonly found in countries such as Honduras, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. The wolf cichlid gets very large and you will need a large aquarium if you plan on keeping it as a pet in your home. These fish, they can grow up to two feet and they are very aggressive and they are very territorial. They are also considered a cichlid. If you plan to keep a adult sized wolf cichlid, you will need at least a 200 gallon aquarium or more. As a juvenile, you could probably get away with keeping this fish in a 40 gallon and then as it grows a little bit bigger, you you can move it to a 75 gallon and then as it grows even much bigger you can move it to a 125 gallon tank and then when it fully grows out to its max size you can keep it into the 200 gallon aquarium now these fish you do have to keep in mind as juveniles they might not be so aggressive towards other fish just depending on what fish you're keeping it with so i recommend if you do have this as a juvenile like you see here in this clip right here i recommend that you keep it with much larger fish because even as a juvenile this fish will go after and attack try to bully fish that's twice or three times its size it's very aggressive it can fight it's like the mike tyson of fish world it's one of the most aggressive and meanest fish i've ever kept luckily it didn't do too much damage in the 75 gallon tank when i was keeping it while it was growing out but when i did move it into the 125 gallon tank eventually it started going after my fish it went after my veil oscar the veil oscar is twice its size and even though the veil oscar is slow moving the veil oscar is usually considered a fish that can defend itself and is resistant to aggressiveness behavior of other fish but it could not stand the aggressiveness of this wolf cichlid this wolf cichlid absolutely beat the crap out of this fish feeding this fish is very easy and very simple just feed it frozen foods you can feed it frozen shrimp krill blood worms live worms black worms and you can even feed it pellets all right guys so number three on the list is the lima shovel nose catfish the scientific name is listed on the screen right in front of 
of view. This is a catfish that spends most of its time scavenging the bottom of the aquarium or just hanging out upright against glass or an object. According to some online forums, these fish are actually considered aggressive, but in my personal experience, my lima catfish has been great with its tank mates so far. Although I have to consider that mine is still a juvenile that is quickly growing, maybe once it grows more, it will be a little bit more feisty, but right now he's not doing anyone any harm. The lima catfish can grow to about 18 inches, so at its adult size, it will need a larger tank. A 180 gallon tank should be enough. I got mine when it was about 3 inches, started it out in a 20 gallon tank, and then I moved it into a 75 gallon tank, and now he is currently in a 125 gallon aquarium. The fish loves warm water at about 80 degrees, and it's not too picky when it comes to feeding time. Frozen krill and bloodworms is a favorite for this fish. It will also gladly accept pellets. They appreciate hiding spots, but it is not mandatory. As they get older, they will start to go after smaller fish. Smaller fish will be seen as potential food items and potentially prey. I currently keep my lima shovel nose catfish with some medium sized angelfish. I do have a veil oscar in there. I have a sun eclipse catfish in there. I have a blue channel catfish in there as well. That's about medium size. I've had him since he was a tiny little baby. I also have a large Texas cichlid that I've had forever now. He gets along pretty much with all of these fish. I even have a smaller ghost knife in here that he hasn't been able to get to. He hasn't even tried messing with it, but I think that's because the ghost knife has a pretty good hiding spot, but I will be moving that ghost knife pretty soon. But just consider as they get older, what your tank mates are with this fish. Number two on this list is the Polypaterus bisher, aka the dinosaur fish. These fish have been around millions of years and they are native to Africa. The bisher can get to a maximum size of 28 inches and they can easily live for two decades if they are well taken care of. You want to keep an adult bisher in a minimum of a 125 gallon tank. That is the tank size that I currently keep mine and he has been in this tank for about six months and he is doing awesome. At first the bisher might not eat right away for the first few months, at least not when the lights are on, and the bisher might hide quite often if the hiding spots are available, but eventually the bisher will get more active and social and will eat when the lights are turned on. You can feed bisher as many things, they are not too picky. I personally like to feed mine frozen krill. They are slow movers and they do have bad eyesight so you will have to overfeed just a little bit just to give them a chance to eat if you have fast moving and aggressive eating tank mates for this fish during feeding time. They will also try to go after live prey if it's available to them. By accident one time, my bisher got a hold of a large shiner and would not let it go. He had it in his mouth for a while while he swam with it. I don't think he swallowed it, but that let me know that these fish can also be hunters. I do not feed my bisher live fish. The shiner was actually intended to feed my peacock bass that I used to have. Every bisher is different. Some may be more aggressive than the others, so be careful with what tank mates you give your bishers, as they may try to bite and snap on other fish. I suggest giving them tank mates that are bigger than them. And finally, number one on the list is the African Arowana. The scientific name is on the screen. People have nicknamed this fish the African Arowana because one, it originates from Africa, and two, it kind of looks like a Arowana. But the fact is, this fish is more related to the Arapaima and is not a true Arowana. In the wild, they can grow up to several feet long and they can weigh about 20 pounds. That's a heavy fish. When they are young, you can get away with keeping them in a smaller tank such as a 55 or even a 75 gallon aquarium. When they turn into adults, it might be a good idea to keep them in a 250 gallon tank. These fish are considered filter feeders when they are young. As they get bigger, they do require frozen foods and pellets. They spend most of their time looking for food at the bottom of the aquarium. They do not usually go for live fish, but if the fish is small enough, they might try to eat it. Frozen krill, frozen bloodworms, and bug bite pellets are all good foods to feed the African arowana. Currently right now, mine has started eating and he's doing great. I actually got mine about a week ago and at first it was not very active, but keeping the light dim and not making sudden movements has helped get this fish more used to me. This is a freshwater tropical fish and it requires warm water, so a heater is needed. I currently keep mine at 80 degrees and it is thriving in this temperature. The African arowana is also considered to be a omnivore.
Hey guys, thank you so much for making it this far into the video. I really do appreciate it. It really means a lot. I just want to mention if you like the clip of my crab destroying those live crawfish and you want to watch the whole video, I recommend that you go watch it. You can do that by clicking on the card on the top right hand corner. It's a really cool video. It's about to hit 400,000 views. So a lot of people seem to enjoy it. I guess they like to see crabs destroying things. I don't know. But you can also go in the description down below. There's other cool Cool videos for you to watch that I recommend that you go and check out and I'll see you guys in the next video take care and peace out